Pop Up Flamby's Advent Calendar. O I A A A A A Ha, are you here? Mathematicians, welcome back to another episode of Papa Flamis Advent Calendar, and I hope you are enjoying the last days thus far because I certainly do, has been quite a ride and more good videos to come. So, quite a while back, I created um, on my old Math Snacks series, linked on the end of the description, a video Origami 101. And there I was showing you how to basically fold a paper, a square piece of paper, into thirds using uh, two algorithms, basically folding algorithms. One was extremely complicated, which I came up with, and the other one was rather simple. And this got me thinking. So even as a woodworker now, I need to approximate thirds from time to time. So dividing a, a plank into thirds roughly. But how do I do that in a normal case? Is there like an iterative process um, that is behind all of this? And yes, there actually is. And at first I would like to present you this iterative process roughly using just a regular A4 piece of paper. I also made a video on <laughs> A4 piece of paper um, on the very first advent calendar, I think. And after that, I'm going to um, show you how this iterative process works and also how you can use this algorithm to basically di divide any kind of thing, like a piece of paper or something, into p parts, where p is prime. And once you know the prime number divisions, you also know the composite divisions, which is rather cool. Let's go ahead and get started with the piece of paper, shall we? Now I'm fairly certain that most of us tried at least once in their lifetime to fold a piece of paper into thirds at some point. And most of the time it goes like this, at least for me, when I'm just trying to um, brute force it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a very bad guess at what a third is. For example, this one right here. Now, obviously, if, if this is one third, then the other side must be two thirds. Let's fold it in half. Okay, this was a pretty bad guess at first. You can see that it is not divided into proper thirds yet. But what we can do is we can snug up on the one third iteration. So what we are going to do is, since this side is still a bit longer, we are going to make our two thirds that we got right here also a tiny little bit longer by, by shortening the one third. Okay, just a tiny little bit. And now we are going to try and see if we can snug up on the one third a bit more. And you are going to see that we are going to get a bit better. That's a better approximation at the moment. And if you repeat this process, okay, still a bit too long, then you are going to snug up on the thirds eventually at some point. Obviously, in normal case, you don't do these creases too much, okay, because you don't want to damage your paper. But you see, now we got basically proper thirds, which uh, it's totally okay for most real life situations to get fruits like these. So I got the leash of my dogs and what we did with the paper can be done also iteratively with any kind of other object using basically a straight edge and a compass or by um, using a leash or some kind of string or the like. We can use this process but a bit more rigorously. I'm going to show you how. Um, yeah, basically to divide things into thirds at first. And this is also a way to, to basically make angles into thirds. In a normal case, using Euclidean con construction of triangles, it's not um, possible to do thirds, but you can approximate thirds on angles that way. Now, what are we going to do? Now, with, with the paper, it was a bit more um, guessing, I would say. So what we did is we folded the paper somehow and the other side too, and then we were just sliding it around up until it fit. But we can do a bit better than that, and I'm going to present it to you on the leash. So, so at first, what we are going to do is we are going to take a very bad guess at what our third is going to be. For example, this guess right here. You see, this right here is a pretty terrible guess because this right here is obviously not a third of our leash that we got. Now, this is not a problem at all. Let us suppose that this right here is our third at first. Meaning, if this right here is a third, then this other piece, which is longer, which is longer than one half of our string or the leash, is going to be two thirds, obviously. We are just going to guess. Now, we can go a bit further on this guess. We, we can basically iterate it. If this right here is one third and this part right here is two thirds, obviously if we fold the two thirds into halves, then we are going to get three thirds out. You see, this is not accurate right now. But see what happens if we fold this piece, this longer one, those approximately two thirds into half. Okay, now we are going to grab where we folded it. And now this right here is probably a third. 
it's not yet. But it's going to converge to being a third. Now we turned our bet guess into something which is going to converge hopefully to a third over time. Now this right here is one third. Then this right here is obviously two thirds. Let us fold it into half once again. Now it's getting closer, you see, there's not much of a big difference. Now this right here is a third, that's a third approximately and this right here too. Now let us grab once again where we folded it. Let's turn it over. Now this right here is now our new third. This is our new two thirds. Let us fold it in half once again. Oh, it's getting pretty close and we're going to iterate it. Okay, I guess you can see the pattern here. Okay, if we iterate it further, ah, that is pretty close already. Now. Let us go ahead and get started with doing the last few iterations. One more. In normal case you need to do infinitely many but for our practical purposes is already enough to stop at this point because now we got basically perfect thirds. Isn't that cool? We made a very bad guess at the start and over time it's going to converge to a third. This is called the cobweb method in nonlinear dynamics and chaos and this basically means that if you have a certain sequence then it's going to converge over time to the certain value if we have a system of equations or just an e equation given as a sequence so-called difference equation. Now we can turn this into more mathematical notation. It's actually rather easy to do so. And what we are going to do is we are just going to put it on the blackboard what we have found out. So, so at first we have our leash, okay? And this leash has a total length of L. And what we did then is we made a very bad guess at the start. This very bad guess being that we took one part which was greater than a half, okay, I told you it must be greater than a half, otherwise it wouldn't converge if you just put it into perfect halves then it's never going to converge anywhere, obviously, and if it's less than one half, okay, so if you take this part to be two thirds then it's going to diverge overall, this part is going to get smaller and smaller over time. So we are going to say that this right here is going to be D, okay, for di division at this point. This part D must be less than a half. And then obviously this part right here is going to be the length minus D, our total length minus D. Okay, now this right here was our original guess to being approximately one third. And this right here must hence be approximately two thirds. Now think back what we did. What I told you is we are going to divide this interval that we have right here up into a half once again. So we are going to halve it, okay, this is roughly a half. And if we were to halve this, then obviously this part right here is going to be one half of L minus D and it's going to be approximately one half of two thirds, namely one third. Now, I want you guys to remember our original one third, D, our approximation, our bet guess at the start, is going to be equal to the same value approximately. And you can think of all of this as being an iterative process, a difference equation. This right here is going to be our D0 at the start and then this right here is going to be our D1 for example. Or in the general case this right here is our Dn, our nth member in, in a sequence of iterations and this right here is our Dn plus 1, you could say, our n plus 1th member in this iteration. But point is, we now have a certain equation, namely we know that if our division at the start is going to be roughly a third, then one half times L minus D is going to be roughly a third to over time in this iterative process. Now we can solve this equation easily. Over time it's going to converge to, okay, 2D, multiplying both sides by 2 because not equal to 0 is the successor of 1, is equal to L minus D. Then what we're going to do is we're going to add D on both sides, meaning 3D is equal to L, or in other words, D is going to be L divided by 3, a third over time. Okay? In the limit, if you do this infinitely many times, infinitely often, then our divisor right here is going to converge to a third. Isn't that pretty cool? I mean that is a nice algorithm and it works very, very nicely. We got it to converge to a third pretty quickly overall. And we can do better than that. I mean next up would be the division into fourths. That is not hard, we are going to halve it and then we are going to half the halves. After that is the next prime number, 5. And now we are going to go into the general case of dividing things up by taking 5 as, as an example. So in, in general, for any prime p, for prime divisions p, 
what do we get? We are going to get, uh, we are going to take as an example the division into fives. You are probably able to guess. So at first we have a certain interval going. Okay, we are going to take a bad guess once again. It must be less than one half, this part that we got right here, we are going to call it d. Meaning if we take our leash for example, this is going to be the length minus d once again. Now, how can we divide all of this up into fifths or peeves? <laughs> peeves, this sounds weird. Now, just think back. This right here is going to be roughly a fifth, just like our original guess up here with the three was a third. This right here is roughly a fifth. Now, L minus D is hence roughly four fifths. Now what we can do is we can once again extract a fifth part of L minus D from this interval by obviously dividing this interval into quarters, into fourths. Meaning by dividing this up once again, okay, halving this and halving the halves once again, one of these parts is going to be one over four L minus D obviously. And this is our new one fifth. But don't forget, our original one fifth that we got right here is also d, meaning we once again have an equation to solve. One quarter l minus d is equal to d. Multiplying both sides by four is going to give us um, l minus d being equal to 4d. Or in other words, adding d on both sides gives us 5d. Dividing by five is going to give us that our division that we got is equal to a fifth of l. Oh. Okay, this works nicely. So in general, I think you can see where we are going at here. If you want to divide something up into a prime number p, then what you are going to do is you are going to take a bad guess at first, meaning this right here is going to be one p of our whole length, meaning l minus d is going to be roughly p minus one over p parts. Then we are going to divide this up into p minus one parts yet again, giving you an equation which is going to be satisfied by just solving it for our division d. And it works like this all the time. And I can demonstrate it for you on the number five once again using the leash, okay? This right here is our leash yet again. And I'm going to take a very terrible guess. For example, this right here is our terrible guess. You can see it's definitely not a fifth, but we are going to guess that this right here is our fifth at the moment. Meaning this right here must be four fifths or p minus one p. Meaning what we need to do for the example of five is we are going to half it and then we are going to half the half once again. We are going to quarter it. And now we are going to grab it at the point right here where it's going to be a quarter. Now this right here is going to be one fifth now, our new one fifth. And this right here is going to be four fifths. Let us go through the process again, okay? Dividing it, halving it and halving it again. Grabbing it here, hopefully. And this right here is our new one fifth. Now we are going to, come on leash, divide it up yet again. And we are already nearly done. This converges really quickly and I think it converges even faster for any prime p bigger than five. Now we are going to divide it up yet again and this is it. Those are fifths, okay? Those are fifths, see? One and then two and then three and then four and then five. Yes, so we got it. This turned out nicely and it's going to get more and more complicated the bigger you get and the composite numbers are absolutely terrible. If you want to divide something up into six, you are going to take a bad guess at first. But now this means that you need to divide this one right here up into fifths because um, n minus one basically. Six minus one is fifths. But to divide this up into fifths, what do you need to do? You are going to take a bad guess like this one right here, this is now four fifths and now you need to quarter it. And now you need to iterate on your four fifths that you got right here infinitely many times up until you turn this into fifths. But then you are only at the point where you are going to have your new one six in your hand. And then you need to start dividing into fifths once again on this longer part and try to do this infinitely often. It's going to be terrible, but it works. It's an algorithm that is going to work. It's an iterative process which works terribly fine, even though it's extremely inefficient <laughs> in the context of real life situations. But if you want to divide something into thirds or fifths or sevenths, this right here is going to work pretty nicely, I tell ya. And this basically concludes everything I wanted to say for today.
And I hope you did enjoy what you have seen today. And if you want to see more number theory, equation solving and all of that kind calculus, then I invite you to try out the contents of today's sponsor Preant who are kind enough to sponsor yet another video here on this channel. Now this video was quite a lot of fun and it was rather interactive for me. In normal case I don't do a real life stuff too often here on this channel. But if you are also someone who learns by doing something with their hands, trying out interactive content and exercises, then the content of Brilliant might be the perfect fit for you. Brilliant is an online learning platform and app with nearly 70 interactive courses in all topics STEM, be it mathematics, physics, computer sciences. Everything you can possibly think of in the STEM branch will be represented over there by a lot of exercises and interactive learning courses. Interactive in the sense that you can do something with your funky chess hands, just like I did here with the leash. You can take your mouse on your computer and start grabbing functions, trying to turn functions into something else, trying to play with the parameters up until you learn something about the behavior of a parabola, for example, or how permutations work in group theory. All of this and even more can be found over in Preend. And if this feels like it's something for you, if you feel like trying it out, or maybe you are still looking for a nice Christmas present this year for yourself or for a loved one, then why not try out the link at the top of the description, preen.org slash maths. With it, you can try out Brian for completely free, at least a big portion, but more importantly, the first 200 people to actually make use of the link get 20% of an annual premium subscription, which is a freaking great deal considering how much content they have available on their website already. And they are always brushing up on the old courses, try to improve them even more and they are uploading new courses on a monthly basis. It's just so amazing. You are virtually never going to run out on content over on Brilliant. So definitely make sure to check it out and support the channel this way. And if you did enjoy today's video, why not check out my personal Teespring shop Stemage.eu and Stemage.com this advent calendar. A lot of great deals going on over there. Also don't forget to subscribe to Flamby's World, my woodworking channel. And up until the next video, I wish you guys a flamble day. Please stay safe. Ciao.